in a move that <laughs> could not have helped the Young Turks more, CNN has decided to hire Corey Lewandowski. This former campaign manager for Donald Trump, who was fired by Trump for being too incompetent and too thuggish. He'd grabbed a female reporter, assault charges had been filed. He, he was too violent for Trump's side. And then uh, one of the reasons he was fired is Trump asked him, hey, what's going on with the campaign? What's our plan for uh, the ground game and, and staffing in the swing states? And he's like, oh, I don't know. This buffoon who was too stupid to be in the Trump campaign, eagerly, immediately hired by CNN. They threw hundreds of thousands of dollars at him. They think they scored a coup. I'm going to tell you at the end what is the worst part of the hire. But first, I'm going to give you criticism from the rest of the media, including other people at CNN. And then I'll get you uh, what I think is the whole picture. They missed the whole picture. Now, why do I say it, it helps TYT? Uh, we've been telling you all along that we're better than the mainstream media. We're better than CNN. And here they are. They proclaim it to the world. <laughs> we're going to hire Trump's campaign manager who ran that racist campaign and it was a thug and he's going to represent CNN. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Except you're doing damage to the country. So as much as it helps TYT, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a terrible idea. That's what turns you from the most trusted name in news to the most busted name in news. So now let me give you even CNN reporters saying something similar. They, he was on with Alison Camerata and she asked him, oh, a lot of people don't like you, even including in this building. Here, let's go to the tape. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask you, there's been a lot of reaction to CNN hiring you as a contributor. I don't know if you've heard about some of the reaction. No. It turns out not everybody is a fan of the decision. And I think that the crux of that uh, criticism is that you never seem to be a big fan of the press or to have much respect for the press. Um, why did you have such strange relations during your time there at the Trump campaign with the press, do you think? I don't think that's true. I think what you have is if you look at the individuals I work closely with on a day-to-day -day basis, we had great relationships. I have great relationships with the media. I mean, the ones he wasn't assaulting or banning. Remember how many times Corey Lewandowski banned different media organizations from covering Trump events. But he had great relationships with the ones that would bow their head and do exactly as Mr. Trump ordered. Okay, but so that's only one of the problems. And by the way, don't think the CNN is holding itself accountable. That segment right there was a softball because they know everybody's talking about it and they allow Corey Lewandowski to give an answer and go, oh, okay, oh, he had a great relationship with the press. Oh, fantastic, let's move on. So uh, here is an insider talking to page six at New York Post saying CNN is facing a near internal revolt over the Corey hiring. They go on to say female reporters and producers especially they are organizing and considering publicly demanding that Lewandowski be let go. Let me just note for the record uh, that my skepticism that they will actually follow through on that threat. They'll do damage control like that. Management will send memos saying, be careful what you say publicly. It could have consequences. That means, yeah, yeah, yeah you think you're being cute, we'll fire you. Then where are you going to go? Okay, so my guess is everybody in the building will go, oh, that's, I can't believe that. Oh, we now immediately accept it and we will go forward. But I could be wrong. There's other groups that are upset. Latinos and others in the newsroom feel uh, betrayed uh, by an homage to Trump, so may, they may do a public letter objecting to the move. That's more likely because it's hard to fire minorities after they say we object to a guy who calls us racist and uh, rapists and criminals. Firing them after they do a public letter would be a little bit difficult for CNN management. But nonetheless, uh, my guess is this so-called revolt will be put down fairly quickly and fairly easily and everybody will know, hey man, I got a paycheck uh, to get and I'm going to do whatever the bosses tell me to do. Okay, now they continue in the post. Meanwhile, CNN's uh, newest commentator is apparently under strict non-disclosure agreement as a former Trump staffer. Trump's NDAs uh, are reportedly binding, quote, at all times thereafter, employment with the candidate has ended. So you know what that means? That means he's actually useless. So sometimes they hire people who are with the campaign so they can give you a, a tiny morsel from the campaign. Usually it's totally BS, something totally safe. But they throw that out there like, oh, look at me. I'm going to give a slight criticism of my own side. And like, oh, 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 they're so unbiased. Corey Lewandowski can't even do that by law. 
because he's contractually obligated to never say anything bad about Donald Trump. And CNN hired that guy to be a news source for you guys, a commentator that you should take seriously. But then, if you're watching this, you probably hardly take CNN seriously in the first place because you get your news online and hence actually have options for the truth. Okay, now we go to Mediate. They had a really interesting article from someone who's also in the news industry, cable news industry, but did not want to come out for fear of punishment. By the way, these are our, look, I, I agree with a lot of what this person wrote, and I'm going to give it to you positively. But understand the state of news in this country, that if you're going to say the truth, you can't say it publicly. You got to say it off the record. Otherwise, you might be fired by your news organization for being honest with your viewers. That's where we are with cable news. And you wonder why Americans are at a 6% approval rating for the mainstream media. Anyway, now let's go to the heart of the letter uh, on Mediate. Uh, they explain the vast majority, I say they because I, I don't know if it's a he or a she. The vast majority of critics seem to be missing the most salient and disturbing reality. That they have just hired another talking head to spew or at least defend statements and or positions that would never be deemed acceptable on major national television networks under any other circumstances. So he hates the press, he's useless, and he gets to spew racism and bigotry on air unchallenged <laughs> that no one else would get to say under normal circumstances. There's more. They explain this uh, anonymous news source. Allowing the candidate himself to appear and then challenging those proclamations is one thing, but to suggest those bigoted and false statements are open to debate by providing, quote, both sides presents a warped reality that should trouble any journalist or journalistic institution. Earlier in the letter, this person had pointed out all the things that Donald Trump says that are indisputably bigoted, saying I'm going to dis actively and proudly discriminate against one religion, I'm going to ban them, I'm going to profile them, I'm going to call a whole group of people coming in uh, from Latin America rapist criminals. I mean, you've heard the whole thing. And a number of statements that are just flat out false, demonstrably false, proven to be false. If you challenge Trump on that, which by the way, they barely sometimes do, lately they've been doing better. Now you've got a commentator and a pundit on your air who's just spewing that stuff unchallenged because he's giving you both sides. Both sides do it. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to do this. All right. And then he goes on to explain our networks have standards and practices manuals that are being effectively shredded by allowing these surrogates to advocate and repeat bigotry and factual fallacies. And, uh, and by the way, this person says, oh, by the way, the media is actually liberal. They are right about that. But this isn't about being against the right. This is about right and wrong. I don't agree that the media is liberal at all. Look at the decisions they just made. So an individual producer or reporter inside the media might be liberal, might be, but the bosses aren't liberal. The management of CNN was so quick to hire Corey Lewandowski. Is that a liberal position? No, it's a deeply conservative position. Finally, from this person, an interesting analogy. They say, think of it in a completely different context. What would happen if the CEO of a global publicly traded company determined that based on the criminal actions of a certain Jewish lawyers at other companies, he would stop hiring any Jewish lawyers until we can, quote, figure out what's going on? After all, the CEO maintains a disproportionate number of Jews are lawyers and therefore likely lawyers slash criminals as well. Said CEO's future or lack thereof would be infamously cemented. Would that ever be treated like some sort of debatable question? Now you know the answer to that, of course not. They'd be fired, they would be shamed as they absolutely should be. But you do it to Muslims, it's debatable. In fact, I'll hire your former campaign manager to bring that debate to the American people. Should we be bigoted against all Muslims and Mexicans? I don't know, let's have a debate about it. Anti-Semitic, no, 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 no. Anti-white, oh, no way, no way, no way, that's the majority of our audience. Okay, it, point out the problems with cops, well, that's perceived as anti-white, don't do that. Okay, but Muslims and Me Mexicans, I'll give someone hundreds of thousands of dollars to go on the air and make those bigoted arguments and call it even. That's what they're doing. So those are all the criticisms from inside the press. But let me add the thing that I promised you in the beginning, my criticism. All this stuff is true, but the, the fifth layer of this is CNN and the rest of the mainstream media, they have the wrong model. They hire all these people 
because they think that insiders watch their programming. No, you schmucks. Most of the audience is outsiders. If they're sitting in Wichita or Seattle or Topeka or, or anywhere, they're not in your cocktail circuit. They don't think that it was a brilliant move to hire Jay Carney or David Axelrod or Karl Rove or Corey Lewandowski. There's no one in a bar in San Antonio going, oh, who got Corey Lewandowski? Oh, CNN did? Well, I can't wait to hear what he's got to say. I'm going to rush home and watch. You know, Aaron Burnett had the first interview with Corey Lewandowski after he was hired. It was a headline that said, oh, she has her worst ratings ever despite the interview. No, 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 not despite the interview, because of the interview. No one gives a damn what these insiders think. You think that it's a coup to get mouthpieces for the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or the government or the military? No, you're appealing to people just like you, the rich and the powerful that live in Washington and New York. So you keep doing news for those insiders and think you're so brilliant and you will absolutely destroy yourself. The only reason I'm helping you by telling you this, if I really wanted you destroyed, I wouldn't tell you at all. I'd be like, oh, man. oh gosh, I was going to hire Corey, but you got him? Oh, no. I, I'd play that game. I'd invite you to a red wedding. But no, I'm telling you because you're hurting the country. So when all you do on cable news is programming that's designed to support the insider position, it's disgusting, it's revolting, and it hurts any effort to do real journalism and arrive at the truth. And that's what a great majority of Americans believe, whether you like it or you don't.